Coming up, blasting through the agility course Bassett style. Mucking out stables, this grandson gets tips from an old master. And this pug learns how to be the perfect therapy dog. Serious athletes need to train every single day. Karen Pearson King is one tough coach. Her unlikely athletes are Basset Hounds, Annie and her brother JR. It's really important for Annie to be in shape and to be conditioned. Um, we can't be weekend warriors out on a trial and expect her to do good. She's got to be in top shape all the time. Annie is the only Basset Hound competing at the American Kennel Club Masters level, and she has the awards to prove it. Annie has a big competition tomorrow and a chance at another ribbon. The only thing standing in her way is her fear of the triple jump. Good girl, Tiger! People often ask Karen why she trains Basset Hounds in agility. I started doing agility because I wanted to prove to people that bassets aren't just couch potatoes. I think the reason why Annie has been able to succeed so well is that she really has a desire to please me, and she really, really wants to make me happy. She's a real athlete. She's a, a real champ. The next level for Annie is the Master Excellence title. If she does well at tomorrow's competition, she'll be one step closer. Right now we have five successful wins and we need five more and I really want this for her because she's worked so hard and I want to prove to the world that we can do it. JR tries to emulate his sister's success, but unlike Annie, he's a typical Basset. Slow, stubborn, and easily distracted. Okay, well we have to do that one again, JR. JR is also competing, but um, because he's a very stubborn male, he is more comic relief than he's ever going to be an athlete. Bassets were bred for um, hunting rabbits, and that's why they have the short legs. And they have the second strongest nose to the bloodhound. And that's what makes them so hard to train for agility. They'll have a basset moment where they just will smell something, and it will turn them right around, and I've lost them. An agility course presents daunting obstacles for a basset hound. When your legs are only a few inches long, clearing hurdles is quite a feat. The triple jump is what spooks Annie. Annie has never had a problem with um, the spread jumps in uh, competition before uh, January at the Expo Center. And in January, it was the third day of a trial, and uh, she went to go over the triple, and she just smashed right in the middle of it. And because of that, it's been a, a mental block. Um, most of the time, she'll go around it, or uh, she might attempt to take it and not succeed. So there is a real, real mental block there. I would say that the triple is the biggest challenge Annie has to overcome in the next few <laughs> events. Um, it's been a constant battle. It just is a boogie tour. At the next event, it's gonna be a real trial situation to see whether or not she takes that triple. I hope she takes it. I hope she takes that triple. The agility competition is a popular event at the Puyallup Dog Fair. 
Craig French is one of Annie's fans. Well, that's the only Basset Hound in the country that's in the, at, level, at the level of excellence in AKC in the country. And I really admire her a lot. Yeah. Okay. Over 250 dogs are competing today at all levels. As their handlers familiarize themselves with the course, Annie and JR wait their turn. Christy Bowers is one of the judges. Annie loves to run the course. And when she runs it, she qualifies. And so I really enjoy seeing that. And I think that's what it takes to be an agility dog. JR competes at the novice level. He's one of the first dogs called out to the field. JR has a history of getting distracted. We always have problem with the smell of food, smell of hot dogs. Um, it's a real problem. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. This time, it's not the tantalizing smell of fast food that affects JR's performance. But it's clear that something is definitely going on in his mind. If it was a smell of hot dogs, the nose would have gone up in the air. And so I don't think that was it. Nope, it was a mental thing where I'm running. Let me think about this. Do I really want to do it? <laughs> JR doesn't take home a ribbon, but at least he manages to complete the course. And now, the excellence level event. Annie faces some stiff competition, including Shimmer, a US champion and world silver medalist. Well, you don't usually see the Bassets get up quite that far, so but it's another reason she's sort of a crowd favorite. Karen has a technique to get Annie ready to go. Well, what I try to do is really get her motivated and jazzed, you know. You, you want that edge and you want her to be really excited, which is hard to do with the basses. And now, Annie's ultimate test, the dreaded triple jump. And she clears it. Annie is doing well. She's almost home free. But suddenly, something goes wrong. She knocks the bar on a single jump. This disqualifies her automatically. Now she won't get the point she needs to advance towards her title. But Karen is philosophical about it. Annie did great. She did super. I'm so pleased with the way she did. Uh, it was, I, I'm afraid it was handler error. I stopped suddenly, which caused her to sort of stop above the, the jump and then knock it down. That's what happened. So Annie should fire me, shouldn't you, Annie? Yeah, get a new handler. Even though Annie's disqualified, she did conquer her fear of the triple jump. And as usual, she won the hearts of the crowd. Kathy Dumaresque couldn't keep her horses without her border collie, Casey. He's always there to help. Oh. Up here. Thank you. Now, Shadow, his slim young grandson, is training to take over the job. Come here, Shadow. What's this? Up here. Up here. Hit it. Good dog. Get the other one, please. Casey right is almost 12. He has bad hips and fused joints near the paws, but he doesn't want to retire. 
it's really hard on him right now that he can't do what he was doing. He wants to help. He lets Shadow do a few things, but he's very jealous of it. It's his job, and he likes to do it all. <laughs> Casey brings me anything, so he'll bring me the halter. Um, we're trying to get Shadow to do that. He'll get the rope, but he won't bring it to me yet. <laughs> He's learning. Casey will do anything. Casey, mind you, when Casey was Shadow's age, he wouldn't. Casey wasn't good till he was two, so that says a lot for Shadow. He's already doing stuff, and he's only one. Good boy. Border collies are highly intelligent, but they're slow to mature. They act like puppies until they're two or three. Shadow has a lot of growing up to do before he can follow in Casey's footsteps. Casey doesn't want to let Shadow take over all his duties. Border Collies are workaholics and happiest when they have a demanding job. He's just helping me through the rough part. <laughs> if Shadow wanted to come pull um, and Casey was trying to do it, there'd be a bit of a snarling match. Casey's basically saying, get lost. <laughs> this is my job. I can still do this job. Go away. <laughs> Kathy got Casey after a tragic riding accident changed her life. My accident happened here on this track in 1985. I was galloping a thoroughbred racehorse, and the horse suddenly bolted as I was coming down the back stretch, which is right that area over there. We had hog fuel piled around the edges, um, something like there is now, but they were a lot higher. And then at the last second, the horse realized he was going too fast to stop, so he leaped and tried to jump the pile. Um, and that just catapulted me right over his head, did a complete flip, and landed on my back on the far side of the pile. I broke my back. It punctured the spinal cord. So I'm paralyzed now from the waist down. Kathy thought she'd never ride again. Deb McKay, her riding partner, helps Kathy mount her beloved horse, Union. Oh, Union. It's nice having somebody to help you. Help you get on and, and uh, ride with. Getting off is a little easier. I can do that by myself, but... Um, she's taping my feet into the stirrups so that my legs don't flap around and bother the horse. This way, um, they're taped into the stirrups and the two stirrups are tied underneath so they don't flap around. Because of his arthritis, Casey stays behind. This is the one time when he lets Shadow do as he pleases. And unlike Casey, Shadow is always ready to run. Dog, you know. Border Collies are bred for endurance. They like to work hard every day. For a Border Collie in his prime, a two-mile run is barely a warm-up. Shadow is young, fast, and tireless. <laughs> okay, he's like sliming it in there really good. Look at how dirty you are. Look at you. Look at you. I have a hat that says, uh, riding is my life, the rest is just detail. <laughs> Case, get the fork. Bring it here. No, oh, the fork, Case. Case, the fork. Go get that one. Good dog. Bring it here. Come on, bring it here. To afford to keep horses, Kathy cleans stables. 
Casey has been helping her for years, but now that he can't do everything, Shadow is taking over. Okay, wait. Shadow has learned how to empty the wheelbarrow. Casey can't do this because of his arthritis, but he insists on supervising from the sidelines. Dig, dig, dig. Tell him. Casey has always barked when he dug it out. I'm not quite sure if it was get everyone to watch him do it or he always gets excited and barks. Might have been telling me Shadow was doing a good job. Here you go. Bring the bucket. Little by little, Casey lets Shadow take on more of his duties. It's as if Casey knows Kathy needs help, and he won't always be around to do it. You get it, Casey. Get the bucket. Bring it. Bring the bucket. Come on. Hannah boy. Bring the bucket. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, bring the bucket. When I look at him, it's, it's a, like a whole chapter of your life. I mean, I've had him since he was 12 weeks old, and he'll be 12 years next month. So um, it's hard to imagine life without him. Good dog. Thanks, Casey. Good dog. Shadow's just come along so fast and been so good. Everybody wants to know if he's a smart and is he doing what Casey did. And, He'll never replace Casey, because Casey's irreplaceable. But uh, he is very smart, and he'll do a good job. I know he will. It's like chapter two, here comes Shadow. <laughs> Sailor, a tan-colored pug, and his girlfriend, Sirene, two pampered pets with very different personalities. I would describe Sailor's personality as a little macho guy. Um, Sirene is more friendly towards people, towards strangers. Serge Marcil has been a director for Dogs with Jobs for three years. It inspired him and his wife, Jennifer, to train their pugs as therapy dogs to visit hospital patients. But before they can be accepted into the program, they'll have to pass a certification test. Sailor and Siren have never worked a day in their lives, but Serge thinks their temperament makes them suited for therapy work. What I love about pugs is that they, they have a heart that is so huge, they give so much love. They're lap dogs. They were bred to be loving and just to be with their owners. Serge is training the dogs for their certification. He has his doubts about Sailor. Sailor needs to calm down, I guess, to a new situation and new people and new environment and, and, and just trust that it's gonna be all right. Part of the training is getting the pugs accustomed to new things, like this subway grate. Good boy. Sarita Elman is a volunteer pet therapy coordinator in Montreal. Her dog, Ralph, is Montreal's star therapy dog. He has more than seven years of therapy work under his collar. Sarita will decide if Sailor and Siren have what it takes to be therapy dogs. First and foremost, Sailor and Siren have to uh, like people. They've got to not be afraid of being approached by a person. If they growl and bark too much, then that is not a good therapy dog. Sailor needs to get used to strangers. Sailor? Always comes to Papa. Come on, go say hello. Go say hello. Which one is your favorite dog? This one. This one is your favorite dog? This one. Sailor and Siren will be tested at a hospital in two weeks. 
Serge wants to get them accustomed to situations they might encounter. Assy! Okay, you know what? Let me just drop it beside him. Let's see how he reacts. Therapy dogs need to be clean because they visit hospitals. This is a challenge for Sailor and for Serge. So I'm going to check his ears to see if they're nice and old. Today is the pug certification test. Sarita checks them for cleanliness and makes sure they're comfortable being handled. He might yelp. I'm going to squeeze the padding over here. Okay. No. Nope. So far, so good. good. Sailor's next good. challenge is dealing with a hospital environment. Okay. Okay. When the dog barks, reassure him that everything's okay because you're in a strange place with strange sounds. I'm going to drop this very, very loudly onto the floor. It's just to see how the dog reacts. Sailor doesn't bark. Serge's training with the crutches is paying off. Well done. Good boy. <laughs> and now the real test. Sailor visits his first patient, Mrs. Egerton, who's blind. Oh, look at look at the silky oh. ears. Oh, the sweetheart. <laughs> okay, so I hold him. Calm him down. Calm is, him is, down. Is he, is he going Tell to, him it's okay. He that noise across the room. It's, oh, oh, it's, okay. Okay. It's, it's okay. okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay, <laughs> sweetheart. <laughs> well, if, if you do that every time I walk down the street, I'll, I'll know exactly where I am. <laughs> <laughs> Sailor barked. Will he pass? Jennifer and Serge, both of your dogs have passed the test. All you have to do is work on Sailor for one thing, make strange people sounds. That's what he seems to uh, get a little bit worried about, but otherwise they're wonderful dogs. Yeah. Siren, Sailor, okay? Yeah. Somebody. Will